more new faces are showing up at the soup kitchen in the southern Cypriot city of Limassol. Entire families asking the Orthodox Church for a free meal. The church is warning that some radical new changes are afoot. Cyprus needs a bailout. The communist-ruled EU member is cash-strapped. Unemployment is on the rise and the economic outlook is gloomy. 57-year-old Costas is looking for a job. Nothing special, just something, anything. But instead of blaming the lack of competitiveness of the Cypriot economy, banks for their investment choices, or even the politicians for not having reformed the island's economy in time, he blames the EU's free labour market. In Cyprus there is a big problem now. It's getting worse because more people come here to eat. They don't have food. 300 people and families. And uh, there are no jobs in Cyprus because the Europeans came from uh, Romania, Bulgaria, all over the place, and they take the jobs of the Cypriots. But the problem also lies elsewhere. Cyprus suffers from its close links to crisis-shaken Greece. Just nearby the church's soup kitchen, Cypriots and tourists mingle happily on the Limassol beach. During the last few decades, the southern part of the still-divided island got used to stunning growth rates and huge cash inflows from abroad. But the Greek nightmare throws a frightening shadow over the Cypriot paradise. For more than a year now, Cyprus has been cut off from international capital markets. Double-digit interest rates make it impossible for Cyprus to finance its current budget deficit through market condition loans. The party is over, the Orthodox Church reminds us, and a new reality is beginning to bite. When the church started the food program in Limassol in 2003, just a few elderly people showed up. Since then, the number of hungry mouths has multiplied. We have a lot of families coming here, and uh, the last two years we have the begin a lot of more uh, families coming and asking for getting some food because it's a free service. And the reason is because one or two of the parents uh, usually they lose uh, their jobs. We have children, but they can't afford to buy a sandwich or a juice in the school. Cyprus may need a bailout that is more than half the size of its 17 billion euro economy. The employment agency in Nicosia is crowded. The jobless rate just climbed over 10%. Compared to Greece, it's low. But for Cyprus, that's extraordinarily high. For the last two years, 28-year-old highly qualified Andreas has been unemployed. Now, he wants to leave. If I would be lucky, I will find a job in the rest of the Europe, maybe in Germany, in France, maybe. Or I'm looking for a job in, uh, in Australia or Canada, but they want a visa for uh, these countries and it's not the easier thing to take a visa now. In Europe, youth unemployment is highest in Greece at 53%. Cyprus lies at 29% while Germany enjoys Europe's lowest youth unemployment rate with just 8%. The EU average is 22%. 27-year-old Jana studied graphic design and downscaled her career hopes, but couldn't even land a secretarial job. Her mother has been unemployed for two years, and her father, who worked in the construction sector, is job hunting too. <laughs> I've been looking for a job for six months now. All my friends are in exactly the same situation as I am. They cannot find anything at all. Because of the crisis, I got fired by a company that had to close down one of its three shops. Cypriot banks' balance sheets are suffering under the weight of bad Greek debt. An estimated 23 billion euros were channeled from Cyprus to Greece, hence the need for urgent recapitalization. Cyprus's three biggest banks are exposed to the tune of 42%, 17% and 34% respectively, with regard to Hellenic debt. When investors agreed last year to what is called a Greek haircut, it wasn't just hair they lost. This is especially true for the Cypriot banks that bought up Greek junk bonds. They lost three quarters of their value due to that haircut agreement. 
Andreas Lazaridis has been cutting Alex Apostolides' hair since his childhood. Today, Apostolides lectures in economics and knows all about financial scissors and crisis management. Is there a possible solution? What's going to happen? Will we do better or worse or what? There's definitely been a failure of economic planning. We made decisions expecting a recovery while it was clear that no European recovery was in the works. But my worry is that with elections in 2013, I hope that there is a cross-party agreement to the reforms because that will definitely help keep tensions low. When downgrading Cyprus's ranking to junk, rating agencies pointed out not just the bad banks but the government's fiscal slippage. Getting an appointment with the governor of the Central Bank of Cyprus is difficult these days. While experts from the European Central Bank, IMF and European Commission check the finances of Cyprus's banks and government, the new Central Bank governor argues against deep cuts. What is your direct recommendation to policymakers and decision makers? My policy recommendation is to uh, basically enter into discussions that uh, would uh, actually look for a program that um, protects economic growth. In another visible sign of the crisis, Cyprus today is plastered with for sale or rent billboards. Simeon Matsis spent his career in both spheres, public and private. He has deep inside knowledge of Cyprus's financial sector, government and public administration. What can be done to bring Cyprus back on track? They have to reduce the number of civil servants. They have to reduce the level of remuneration. They should take care of the health sector and control the cost of health and also uh, deal with the pension scheme because that's one uh, very important area where the government has not taken uh, adequate measures. The situation is critical. To reduce the government's bloated budget deficit, the European Commission wants Cyprus to set up far-reaching healthcare reforms. Over 2,000 work at the new public General Hospital of Nicosia, including 170 doctors. The staff are facing a crisis of morale because of the numbers, the increased work, and the fact that their salaries have started uh, being reduced as, uh, in view of the measures taken uh, because of the crisis. Let's go over to Agros, a small village in southern Cyprus's mountain region. To help ease young people into employment, the European Commission asked the Cyprus government to liberalise the labour market. Marius and Andri are victims of what is called brain waste. Long, expensive studies, but no or just small job offers. It's difficult right now. I studied for four years. Even so, I cannot find a job that corresponds to my university studies, to my qualifications as a computer scientist. Half of my friends are trying to find a job too, but they can't get one either. They have the same problem. I can give you an example of my own. When I applied for a job, the boss there told me that I have the qualifications, but if I wanted to work there, I'd have to do so without any pay for three months, to see if I like it and to see if I will do everything he wants me to do. It's almost as if all those employers aren't searching for qualified employees, but for slaves instead. There is a little glimmer of hope. Cyprus recently discovered rich natural gas resources in its southern territorial waters, which could be ready for extraction by 2016. But such ambitions should not replace structural reforms today.